Hey guys, good morning. Um, it's Wednesday, so we're doing our neighboring devotional. Hope you all made it through the storms last night. I want to ask a couple of questions to get us thinking a little bit this morning. Again, you know, we're talking about how to love our neighbors and what that looks like. Um, so I want you to think about when we gather together on Sunday mornings at the church building, um, to whom do you gravitate? Who do you speak with? Uh, if you're at a party, uh, when you walk into that room and you see who's there, where do you go? Um, and then maybe a more important question, who in both of these situations do you tend to avoid? Uh, let's say you enter into a, a cafeteria situation. Maybe you have to think back to college or think back to high school or junior high or whatever. You walk into a cafeteria um, and you see all these people sitting there and you've got people sitting at different tables. How do you choose where to sit uh, what what makes your decision what group do you want to to sit with uh, we're going to be looking at a passage out of james chapter 2 this morning um, and it says this it says my brothers show no partiality as you hold the faith in our lord jesus christ the lord of glory for if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly and a poor man in shabby clothing comes in and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place while you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinction among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man are not the rich ones the one who oppress you and the ones who drag you into the court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme, blaspheme the honorable name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbors yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the whole law uh, as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable to all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And just a couple of things about um, this passage this morning to think about. Uh, one is that... Christians can and do show this partiality that James is talking about. Notice in the passage he starts out by calling them brothers. Again, he says it uh, in the passage, beloved brothers. Uh, we are not beyond um, uh, breaking the law of God, showing partiality, showing judgment, evil judgment, even James says, against other people. So we are not beyond that. In fact, sometimes Christians can be the worst people about that. Um, and I want, I want us to take a little bit of a, of a test here. You know, if you're on social media, uh, look, at the, look at the section where it says people you may know, that grouping. What are those people? What are those people like? Are they all pretty people? Are they socioeconomically just alike? Is it only one race or very few other other races? Uh, the posts you pick on, on the, the the pics that you post on Instagram, with whom do you associate? If you're in a grouping, are you always with the same people? Do you ever extend yourself beyond those people? Who do you invite into your home? To whom are you willing to show hospitality? Uh, these things reveal some deep things about us, and I'm guilty of this too. In fact, the reason that I can I can look at the social uh, media and look at the people I know that started to be convicted of, look at all these pretty middle to upper class white people um, who are the ones that the algorithms of, of Facebook have pointed out for me, and that's a, that's a shame on my part um, that, that, that that's the case. So Christians... Uh, can and do show partiality. Uh, showing partiality is making distinctions between people and showing evil judgments, this passage tells us. Uh, so showing partiality is not just an innocent, um, these are my peeps, these are who I want to be with. The Bible calls it evil. We're, we're basically saying these people are worth my time, 
and attention. They are worthy of me, and, and all my energy goes into them, and these people are not. Uh, we're declaring who is worth more than others. We're showing evil judgment by showing the worth and value of people. I mean, think about it. When you, when you decide who it is you're going to speak to, let's say in our church gathering, aren't we judging people? Um, and who we aren't going to by who we gravitate towards, and it becomes a, this pattern. Um, uh, thirdly, showing partiality is breaking the entire law of God, the, the Scripture tells us. We mentioned several weeks ago that the Ten Commandments are broken into two tables, love God, love your neighbor as yourself, or love people, and by showing partiality, we're breaking the whole set, those six commands, the last six commands, the Ten Commandments, and in essence, because we're not loving people as God loves, then we are, we are not loving God either, um, that we are not giving value to what and whom God gives value. And, and then lastly, showing partiality can only be cured through the gospel of grace or this um, law of liberty that James talks about. We love because God first loved us. We were the poor. We were the outcast. We were the ones passed by. We were the ones avoided. Um, but God showed no partiality. He brought us into his care, brought us into his family, bought us with a price, sought out after us, was hospitable towards us. Think of uh, 1 Corinthians 1, uh, beginning at verse 26, for consider your calling brothers. And this is how we can, we can grasp and begin to, to love people and not show partiality and grow in this area, is to think on the salvation that God has brought near to us. Again, for consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. We ought not boast in who we are over and above others, but boast in the Lord. And that's as we grasp and grapple with the grace and this law of liberty that God has given to us, that he would extend his grace and care to us, that compels our hearts to get out of ourselves, to be hospitable people, to be gracious people, to not um, just go to the beautiful and the wealthy who, who add, we feel like we add something to us, but for us to add to other people by showing the worth and value of those who are poor and cast off and uh, um, uh, not within the normal groupings of people that we might typically gather with challenge to us and encouragement to us i hope you'll think on these things and, and pray to the lord that he would change your heart in these matters and i'll do the same thank you and we will see you next week mm -hmm.